Web apps often feature dynamic elements that change without the page actually refreshing. When using dynamic elements, there are some considerations that need to be made in regards to accessibility. Most modern web apps make heavy use of JavaScript. A web app might do things on the client side like simple DOM manipulations, or there might be entire applications built in JavaScript that make liberal use of AJAX calls and bleeding edge browser technology. And it's not just limited to web apps. JavaScript is used on all different types of web pages. All this innovation is great, but you also have to think about accessibility. Consider this scenario. Let's say that a blind user is using a screen reader to read the daily news, and the screen reader rattles off one of the top headlines and then moves down the page. As the screen reader moves along paragraph by paragraph, all of a sudden, the headline at the top changes, because in reality, it's meant to be more of a news ticker than a headline. But the screen reader has already passed that part of the page. How will the screen reader pick that up? Let's look at another situation. Let's say that this same blind user encounters some module tabs and wants to look at another section besides what's currently on the screen. The tabs use AJAX when clicked to save bandwidth and improve page load times for users that don't necessarily want to look at the content in the other tabs. However, a funny thing about screen readers is that they almost always have JavaScript disabled so the user can't see the rest of the content. Over the course of this video and the next video, we'll take a look at situations like this and learn how we can mitigate the accessibility issues that come with dynamic content. So let's go back to the news ticker scenario and let's look at a bad example. Here we have apple.com and you can see that they have this news ticker here that shows hot news headlines. Remember, a screen reader is going to read the markup that's on the page and will not read what's actually being displayed on the screen. So this news ticker is slowly rotating through news headlines. Let's go ahead and look at the markup and see what's going on under the hood. So I'll go ahead and find this news ticker here and I will select it. And as you can see right here, the only headline that's currently in the markup is whatever is currently being displayed. They're using JavaScript to pull the headlines from some other source, whether it's Ajax and pulling it from a web service or an RSS feed, or if it's just being pulled from somewhere else on the page, it doesn't really matter. What makes this bad is that the news items aren't actually grouped together here in a semantic way. So if a screen reader came across this, they would basically get whatever headline was currently there and then nothing else. This is bad. So let's see how we can make a better version of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and close these tabs. And here you can see that we just have a basic page. And if I switch over to my text editor, we just have some basic markup here and there's some very light styling. Now first, I'm going to go ahead and create a list of news items. And to do that, I'm going to use an unordered list. And my first list item will be the fox is quick. Definitely some breaking news here. And the next one will be the fox is brown. And the dog is lazy. There we go. And when we switch back to the browser and refresh, we now have a nice semantic list here. Now, this is what the page looks like prior to any kind of JavaScript, and this is what a screen reader will see. Of course, you want to use JavaScript to make the news items cycle, but one tip to keep in mind anytime you're working with JavaScript is that you should look at the page with JavaScript turned off or without JavaScript, just like I'm doing right now. This is a nice semantic list of items, and any screen reader will be able to parse it very easily. Now let's go ahead and add in some code to cycle these news items. I'm only going to touch on this part briefly because this video isn't really about how to make a JavaScript news ticker, it's just about how to make it accessible. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and include jQuery along with an additional JavaScript file. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy these from off screen and include them into our page. Now let's look at ticker.js for just a second here. This is a simple jQuery plugin created by Sam Collette, 
and it's designed to create simple news tickers like the one we're trying to create. Basically, it grabs all the list items into an unordered list, and after it fades the first one out, it fades the next one in, and so on. The user of the plugin can actually set the delay between each one of the news items, which is pretty nice. Down here at the bottom, you can see that if you hover over the news ticker, it will actually pause. More on that in a second. So to make the news ticker work, we have to go ahead and call it on our unordered list. And again, I'll go ahead and copy and paste some code from off screen here. And basically all this is doing is it's just some additional JavaScript code. And it says when the document has loaded, we're gonna go ahead and call the news ticker on our unordered list, which also should have the class news. And then it's going to put a news ticker on it with a delay of one second or a thousand milliseconds. So when we switch back to our browser and refresh, you can see that we now have a nice cycling news ticker. Now I've set a really tight delay of just one second on this ticker just so that you can see it cycling, but you get the idea. You can have a cycling news ticker like this without pulling up external data. It's much better and probably easier just to have it all on one page. Now, if I hover over this ticker, it will actually pause. This isn't useful to blind users, but for someone with low vision or even poor motor skills that has difficulty reading the headlines fast enough, they can just hover over this news ticker and read the current headline. This is a small thing, but it can actually make a big difference. Remember, accessibility is about improving usability for everyone, and there are lots of different types of disabilities to take into consideration. There are many different types of scenarios when dealing with dynamic elements, and this was just one of them. In the next video, we'll look at another scenario.